AIOps is the latest buzz in the observability industry. Many companies are leveraging AI to simplify debugging and accelerate investigations for critical incidents. And generative AI is taking the excitement even further. However, when we started, existing systems and workflows at Meta posed several challenges to bringing in AI ops as we knew it in the industry. And we had to evolve it together with many other teams at Meta. Today, we'll talk about the evolution of AI ops at Meta and our multi-year journey to drive down mean time to recovery for incidents. Hi everyone, I'm Nathan. I'm a software engineering manager at Meta. And with me is Madhura, who is a software engineer at Meta. Our talk is broken into four parts. We are going to start with examples that motivated us to get onto this journey and the challenges that we saw at Meta to solving those problems. Then Madhura is going to do a deep dive into the technical systems that we built and how we integrated it into the products and workflows at Meta and the impact that it had on the mean time to recovery for incidents and the on-call experience. And we are going to end with key takeaways from our journey along the way. But before we talk about what we built, let's go back in time to 2021. Ads Manager is one of the business critical team at Meta. Advertisers around the world use Ads Manager to create ads and reach millions of users worldwide. This team was seeing close to 100 incidents every six months. And if you think about it, that's one incident for every business day. And every time Ads Manager is down, that's a lost opportunity for our advertisers. That's a lost opportunity for the company. And that's a lost opportunity for our users. Nobody wants to see irrelevant ads. And this wasn't unique to just Ads Manager. We were seeing similar trends for many other teams at Meta. Web Foundation, which is a critical team to keeping our site up and running 24 seven, was seeing an overwhelming number of incidents. Or Instagram Reels, which was just starting to grow at the time and was seeing close to four to five days of time to resolve issues. And as we looked towards AI ops as a potential solution, we saw several gaps in our monitoring systems. At Meta, we have some of the most scalable infrastructure for observability in the industry. And we have talked about it in the past at scale talks. We have a system to store metrics. We have a system to store logs and we have a system to store traces. But they've grown organically over the years and they don't talk to each other. So if I'm in the middle of an issue and I'm looking for all my data for a service, there isn't an easy way to find it. I'm stuck finding a needle in the haystack, actually multiple haystacks. This leads to knowledge being limited to a few people, people with a very particular set of skills, skills they have acquired over a very long career to hunt down the right data. And there is no way for them to share it with the team quickly. They can write wikis, but at the pace Meta moves, those wikis are outdated very quickly. And with so many issues, so much disconnected data, and only a few people to look at it, it's hard to look at everything. And we had a diverse set of workflows to deal with the situation across the company. All of these challenges meant that we had to fundamentally think about how to solve these problems together with these experts that worked for the disconnected data that we had at Meta. And now Madhura is going to talk about the systems that we built to solve these problems together with some of these people. Thank you so much, Nitin, for providing that context. OK, so how can we systematically tackle all of the key challenges that Nitin highlighted? In this portion of the talk, I will do a deep dive into the three foundational systems that we evolved across multiple halves to address this. And one thing I really want to call out is that foundations were the key for us. We really had to meet our users in their existing workflows instead of building something from scratch. We worked iteratively with a lot of the on-call teams that Nitin touched upon, but our overall goal was to build a generalized solution that could apply across multiple on-calls and problem domains at Meta. So with that context, let's dive right into the technical details. Our first building block is fully programmable on-call runbooks. So let's double click into what I mean by that. These are powerful executable runbooks. They support Python-based authoring, so users have the full power and goodness of Python to codify their manual investigations. We also have decorative SDKs for quickly authoring telemetry queries across all of the underlying data sources at Meta and ML algorithms to further analyze this data. 
Now, the other side of this is the user experience. And for that, we provide standardized out of the box decorative APIs to produce output UI widgets with intuitive charts and visualizations. So even a noob user with little to no UI expertise can come in and quickly author powerful automated investigation workflows. So this is great. Users are now codifying their previously manual investigations, but it's not that useful without a platform that integrates with users' existing workflows. So for this, we built a fully managed platform that is responsible for orchestrating and deploying these runbooks and providing a host of other convenient features. Our platform integrates with Meta's detection systems to automatically trigger these runbooks whenever an alert fires. And in addition, we also have an interactive UI for users to trigger this runbook on demand. So going back to the Ads Manager case that Nitin touched upon, today Ads Manager is a heavy user of our automated runbook solution. In fact, their analyzers called Detective have been able to codify almost 50% of their manual investigations. So with this, we've managed to tackle a lot of the on-call toil and manual investigation pain points we touched upon earlier. But if we look back to the challenges that Nitin highlighted, a big one that still stands out is that there's tons of observability data at Meta. How do we allow our users to quickly author automated workflows to analyze this data and get meaningful insights? For this, enter our second foundation, analysis algorithms as a service. We've implemented a few fundamental ML algorithms that were scalable at meta scale. And to give you a sense of the scale, we generate billions of data points per day. And our algorithms need to operate at this scale and generate real-time insights in under seconds. Our algorithms library includes algorithms such as past dimensional analysis, various time series analysis algorithms such as time series correlation, anomaly detection, and others. How we implemented these algorithms to be performant at meta scale is beyond the scope of this talk, but if you're interested, I highly encourage you to check out our blog, which links to a paper we published on this very topic. Now on top of our algorithms library, we also built a service to actually execute these algorithms and produce insights. So users that are authoring the automated runbooks I covered earlier can just call into our service as they are building their workflows. But that's not all. We also integrated this service with our most visited dashboards and UIs to run these analysis in place in the UI and meet the users where they are coming to investigate issues. So as an example, this is a snippet of one of our top visited dashboards by the Web Foundation team. As you recall, this is one of the most critical teams at Meta and it's responsible for keeping our website up and running. For this specific situation, there was a spike in web fatals and our analysis service has already run dimensional analysis on the dashboard and isolated the issue to a specific class of enforcement exceptions. And this is clearly highlighted and available to the on-call when they came in to investigate. So this is awesome. With these two foundations, we have actually addressed most of the pain points that we had highlighted earlier. But now we wanted to look back and see how can we make investigations at Meta even faster? In 2022, the reliability engineering team at Meta did a breakdown of the worst critical incidents that the company had seen that year. Now at this scale, critical incidents can have a variety of root causes, but pictured here are the top root causes. And the one thing that immediately jumps out is that code and config changes being deployed at the company were accounting for more than 50% of our most critical incidents. So this pointed us to the third foundation I'll cover today, 
Event Isolation Event isolation is our system for ranking thousands of change events happening at the company and isolating them down to the root causing event. For ranking, we have built event ranking ML models that leverage a variety of signals such as text matching, anomaly detection, context of the owning on call, and others. On an average, we found that when we deployed our event ranking models to production, they were able to filter out more than 80% of the uninteresting events during an investigation. Today, we focus heavily on config based event isolation, but we also have work in progress towards supporting code based event isolation as well. So, let me quickly walk you through an example of event isolation in action during a critical alert. For the given spike in the time series, we can see that our event ranking models have already ranked the top four most suspicious events. They've also added confidence around this ranking, high or medium confidence. And in addition, we've also added annotations that explain the reasoning for this ranking. I really wanted to call this out. We found that adding these annotations were really key in getting our engineers to trust these insights. And they were less likely to trust them if it was more of a black box. So going back to Ads Manager, if you recall, Nitin mentioned that downtime saves are the worst critical incidents for this team and they cause a significant revenue loss for the company as well. So today, Ads Manager actually leverages event isolation heavily to guard against this class of saves. In fact, just recently, they had an issue where Ads Manager was failing to publish for 10% of its users. And by leveraging event isolation, they were able to quickly root cause and mitigate this in under an hour and prevent a much wider outage. So with these three foundations under our belt, I'll hand it back to Nitin to walk us through the impact and the use cases that are being built on top of these foundations. Thanks Madhura for talking about these foundations. Now that we had this foundation, let's talk about how we used it across multiple use cases at Meta. We will talk about three of them here today, but there are many more that we talk about in our blog online. First, we integrated it with Slick. Slick is a system that people use at Meta to store SLOs and track violations against their SLOs so that they can get a monthly report to how they're doing against their SLOs. By integrating with these foundations, people are now able to automatically root cause these violations and set up aspirational goals to their SLOs and improve reliability over time. We also integrated it with Twine, also known as Tupperware, our container orchestration platform. They allow users to troubleshoot common problems with their jobs, stuck updates, unintended restarts. So now, instead of users going to the Tupperware team, they're able to get automated insights on the Tupperware portal when they come in to look for issues. This significantly reduced the on-call load for the Tupperware team. And last, we built Hawkeye using these foundations. Hawkeye is our AI MLOps tool, as you can imagine, ML investigations can be very complex. When something goes wrong with the prediction, it can be a model issue, it can be a feature issue, it can be a data issue. And it usually took tens of engineers across multiple teams to debug what went wrong. By leveraging Hawkeye using these foundations, we greatly simplified investigations for ML debugging. And with these wide applications, we saw up to a 50% reduction in mean time to recovery for critical alerts when these foundations were used. For as manager case, days long investigations are now happening in minutes. And we're seeing a really nice adoption in general across on call set meta with half a million automated analysis every week. And not just the numbers, we hear great feedback from our engineers too. How someone is able to prevent an issue to become like a worldwide issue or how people are able to debug things under five minutes. And honestly, we love hearing this more than the numbers. Now, I'm going to hand it off to Madhura to talk about the key learnings that we had along this journey. Thank you so much, Nitin. It's been super exciting to see the type of impact the team has been having. So along the way of embracing AI ops, we certainly learned a few lessons. And I would like to end this talk by sharing these takeaways with you. First of all, really focusing on improving the quality of the data and metadata of your telemetry systems is key. 
we highlighted how the lack of correlation around observability data made it super challenging to build effective event ranking solutions. And in fact, even today, we don't have a great solution for service dependency analysis and making upstream and downstream correlations during failures. Secondly, relying solely on automation is good, but it can often result in false positives or missed critical issues. We found that an assistive approach where the AI is generating insights, but these are being further validated by our engineers was often the most effective. Thirdly, it's really crucial to focus on the explainability of your outputs. I highlighted this as I was walking through the event isolation example, but we found that giving our engineers the tools to inspect these results and dig deeper was really in important in building trust in the system. And finally, AI ops is definitely not a one-off thing. It requires continuous learning and adapting. We had to constantly evolve our ML algorithms, our investigation workflows, and keep updating our runbooks with constant feedback from on-calls and various teams at Meta. And this was crucial in keeping our system effective with the evolving needs of the company. We are definitely not done yet. There are a lot of exciting opportunities on the horizon with all of the buzz around generative AI and Llama, which is Meta's large language model, and they have a potential to totally disrupt this space. I'm super excited to see where the next leg of our journey takes us. So I hope that this talk provided you with a helpful blueprint for improving your system reliability. And you can check out our blog if you're interested in learning more details. Thank you so much for tuning in.